All right, this is your Gaza War sit rep day 177. No end in sight. Uh, there are a number of very interesting things going on. Uh, some of them unconfirmed, some of them um, just very interesting in the West Bank, elsewhere in the Arab world that has not been a front until now, and in Gaza itself. So in Gaza itself, a couple of major things. One is uh, I have seen news, and we will find out more about this tomorrow, but I have seen news that the Israeli military has withdrawn from the vicinity of Al-Shifa Hospital. That's a 14-day battle that they fought in Al-Shifa. They were expecting, as, I, as I've been covering in these sit reps, they were expecting to do a leisurely stroll commit all the atrocities that they wanted, make up all the phony stories that they wanted. And instead, they found that the resistance was, this time, not going to let them do that. And instead, their vehicles were destroyed. Their, soldier, their snipers were hit by resistance snipers. Their army formations that were forming up in buildings were attacked by grenades, and their formations and, and forward operating positions were hit by mortar shells. So it was a comprehensive defense of the vicinity of Shifa. So while they were inside Shifa, murdering children, raping women, destroying equipment, or ex executing children, executing medical personnel, their troops were also coming under intense fire from the resistance all around the vicinity of the hospital. And it looked to me like this could, had the potential to become a major battle because the Israelis are so invested in attacking hospitals now that it's become one of their central goals. And now that the resistance knows this, they are able to prepare defenses and prepare to really make those attacks very costly. As you have to stay in a place for a long period of time if you want to go and attack and dismantle and commit atrocities at a hospital. And that is exactly the kind of behavior that the resistance makes the Israelis pay for. And so uh, this could have turned into a decisive battle where a huge portion of the Israeli military was destroyed if that was what the Israelis chose. And it looks like maybe they decided not to do that and to withdraw. Although the reports I've seen are very careful, they're very um, cautious, they're telling, the resistance is telling people do not come back, do not come and check and try to survey the damage. This could be a trap, they could be withdrawing to try to see what the resistance does next. They could be withdrawing in advance of major airstrikes on Shifa. So who knows what the next phase is, but it does seem like there's been something uh, that's happened there. There's other fighting uh, all over central Gaza Strip. Uh, al Khan Yunus, Deir al-Bala. So plenty of other locations where fighting is going on in Gaza. There's also a news item from the Palestinian resistance to al Mayadeen, they said the Hamas delegation will not go to Cairo currently. The Hamas delegation is waiting for the results of meetings between the mediators of the Israeli delegation and what will result from them. So they are not um, going to go. Uh, they don't see a reason to go. So that is, those are two major items from Gaza. There's something else something else really important going on in Gaza, which is that according to reports from the resistance that some Arab Palestinian authority troops from the general intelligence service, the Palestinian authority intelligence service. So the Palestinian authority, you may recall, is the authority set up by Israel 
after the Oslo Accords of the 1990s to create, it's not a state, it's not a government, but it's got this authority that it sub becomes a subcontractor on behalf of Israel in the West Bank and also in Gaza. And they had an election in 2005, Hamas won, and they tried to prevent Hamas from taking over. So this is all background. So the Palestinian Authority now consists of mainly the Fatah faction, although the Fatah faction's armed wing, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, have been fighting the Israelis both in Gaza and in the West Bank. So they've, they've, they're an integrated part of the armed resistance, but the um, and Fatah leadership have also made critiques of the Palestinian Authority, but the Palestinian Authority, this not quite government subcontractor on behalf of Israel, led by Mahmoud Abbas, serving the 19th year of his five-year term. They have an intelligence wing, and the intelligence service is reported to have infiltrated Gaza via Rafa. So they are reported to have come through Egypt. And one report I'm reading is says, with direct orders from Majed Faraj, so that's the director of intelligence for the pa Palestinian Authority, aiming to create confusion and chaos within the ranks of the internal front with security provided by the Israeli Shin Bet and the enemy's army. This follows an agreement reached by the two sides in a meeting they had in one of the Arab capitals last week. The security forces in Gaza dealt with these elements, arresting 10 of them and foiling the plot that they came to execute. So the resistance made a statement that anyone coming in with the Israelis, i.e. the Palestinian Authority, or other Arab forces, Egyptians, Jordanians, what have you, if they're coming in with the Israelis, they'll be treated like the Israelis, meaning they'll be resisted militarily and they will come under attack. So they will not be allowed to do anything that the Israelis are not allowed to do. But this is a, um, it's a kind of treacherous development and it's one to follow very carefully. So the resistance has, has made a very harsh statement about this and they've made these arrests. There's also, uh, related to this, um, there's in Tulkaram, in the West Bank, there was a Palestinian Authority attempt to arrest um, some major resistance leaders, the, which has resulted in a resistance and versus Palestinian Authority gun battle in Tulkara. And this has gone on since yesterday. Um, there is uh there are statements calling for calm from various resistance factions. Uh Hamas leader says we need unity in the face of aggression. No party should harm the internal front. There are no official connections, communications between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, and there's no success for any government without coordination of the movement. Hamas's doors are open to all Palestinian forces for joint coordination. Um, how can the new Palestinian government coordinate in the Gaza Strip without consulting Hamas and other factions? There's a gap in the negotiations. The mediators have promised to overcome the obstacles. So there is, and a couple days before I mentioned in the sit rep with John, there is a, um, there was a statement from uh, Soraya Al-Quds, the Al-Quds Brigade, the armed wing of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and they were saying, we will not we will not go into civil war under any circumstances. We will not be turning our guns on our own people. And they were calling for patience, but then, the, but they also were warning the Palestinian Authority to stop arresting, stop collaborating with the Israelis. So something has, the tensions have reached ahead in Tulkaram and possibly elsewhere as well. So the other thing that's going on in Gaza, oh, so the, uh, and uh, I'm just reading a report right now that the Israelis um, are invading Tulkaram. So the Palestinian Authority have left and the Israelis have come in. So this is the kind of coordination when things get too hot from for the Palestinian Authority, they leave and the Israelis reinvade. This is what it is, but the Israeli 
military, remember, is stretched. So if they're having to invade the West Bank, those forces are not available to defend them from Lebanon. Those forces are not available to defend them to invade Gaza. So this is all unraveling for the Israelis. Tulkarum, there are already field reports of talk of attacking and um attacking the Israelis as they're in, and engaging the Israelis as they enter. Uh, just like literally stuff reports that are coming out just now as I'm recording this, field sources reported that the bodies of at least 50 people were martyrs were recovered in and around Al-Shifa following the Iowa Israeli forces withdrawal after a two week long siege. So they've there are other various reports that they've withdrawn to the southwest of the city amid heavy cover fire and artillery shelling. So they're shelling, they're they're firing indiscriminately as they get out of there to not be pursued by the resistance. Yet another thing in Gaza. We have talked briefly about this whole notion of a tribal. Uh, tri the Israelis have tried to create a tribal uh, alliance to distribute aid to form a government at side of Hamas to circumvent Hamas and circumvent the resistance. And they, there was, I think, some kind of an agreement between the tribal council, such as it is, they said they were not going to do it. And they, I think they did try to do some kind of aid distribution. And at the Kuwaiti roundabout in Gaza City, the Israelis massacred them yet again. And they've been murdering tribal leaders with absolute abandon. So it's a very, it's a very mindless, murderous policy. I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it. I, my third attempt was not even very good to try to engage alternatives to Hamas and try to create collaborators and then murder those collaborators and commit the same massacres that you committed when Hamas was was allowed to operate and try to distribute aid as the government, as the municipal service oriented organization in Gaza. So they tried to say, we don't need Hamas, we'll go around Hamas, we'll give the aid through these tribal councils. And then they murdered the tribal leaders and committed massacres in the exact same location in the exact same way. What can we conclude from this about Israeli policy, except they're completely committed to massacre and murder, no matter who's in charge. And that message is not going to be lost on people who might consider collaborating. If you're considering collaborating, Israel has given you the message that they're going to murder you anyway. There have been... There have been more operations, resistance operations, um, you know, smaller scale stabbing operations that I've seen in uh, Hebron, uh, Tel Aviv. So the that there's more attacks, constant attacks happening in inside uh, the West Bank as well. More attacks on Syria by Israel, so airstrikes on Syria from is from Israel, and rocket attacks from uh, inside Gaza, as well as the usual huge number of Hezbollah um, missile attacks uh, on Israeli targets at the border. Yet another phenomenon worth talking about today is the the um, many protests in Jordan. They continue. Uh, there's huge repression in Jordan, but the protests are really, really big. They're continuing to be immense protests on a huge scale uh, in Jordan. They're chanting very militant slogans 
they're coming out in huge numbers to besiege the Israeli embassy in Jordan. And they're saying the masses are against normalization. The masses want the collapse of the Wada, Wadi Araba agreement, the 1994 agreement between Jordan and Israel. What do we want? We want to fight this entity, cancel Wadi Araba. We don't want the land bridge. People of the West Bank, put the authority under your shoes. America is the head of the snake. Death, death, death to America. Um, there are doctors who are saying, Arabs, enough of your coma. Save the hospitals. They bomb the hospitals. All of Jordan is with Hamas. Those with weapons in the West Bank, come on, oh, lion's den. So really, really militant, strong Slogans, huge demonstrations in Jordan, in Amman, and uh, elsewhere too, Tunisia, Morocco. So this is the Arab street. Everybody's always talked about the Arab street. Is it a major threat? Is it going to, is anything going to happen? Is it going to finally rise up and it's always been a matter of time, and it does appear to be happening. And Jordan is, um, it's growing. It's only growing. The protests in Jordan are only growing. Now, what else I have to tell you? Oh, yeah. I mean, in terms of, in terms of this weird story about the Palestinian Authority intelligence infiltrating into Gaza via Rafa crossing the Egypt border. There was an announcement by the Zionist minister, defense minister, Yoav Gallant. He's the one who said uh, they're human animals and they're going to be treated accordingly. Um, he said that they're trying to develop a multinational armed force from three Arab countries into the Gaza Strip. So they're trying to subcontract. They're trying to develop a plan to subcontract. The Israelis are trying to develop a plan to subcontract uh, the occupation of Gaza, the post-war occupation of Gaza. But, uh, but I've said this, and I constantly say this, they have to win the war first. And they're trying to skip that step. And they're doing a lot to try to just skip the step. Can you Can you just skip to the step where the war is over and we can commence the occupation. And that's why they keep talking about the day after plan, even as they're being forced to withdraw from their individual campaigns of atrocity against, for example, the flagship hospital of Gaza, uh, Al-Shifa. Okay. There's West Bank, Gaza... Um, oh, yeah, one major, major event is the Iraqi resistance has struck the Israeli port of Eilat yet again with a drone, and it looks like some damage was done here. There is... Um, there's some kind of military dock it looks like i'm just going to show you what i'm looking at here this is off of southerner 2000 i don't know this twitter account uh, but it cl claims to be a photo off of a telegram channel called warlife 3 again don't know the channel can't verify but some damage done to a military dock by this uh drone attack from from the direction of iraq major uh explosion reported and uh this the, for the iraqis said our mujahideen targeted a vital target in the in our occupied territories with appropriate weapons so all in all a very a lot of different stories to follow. So the major attack from Iraq, the major demonstrations in Jordan, 
the the infiltration of Palestinian Authority intelligence from Rafa, which also calls into question uh, Egypt's role yet again. Did Egypt really know nothing about this? Did Egypt allow this? What's the deal there? And uh, the withdrawal, possible withdrawal, you know, from Shifa, there's always something sinister when they withdraw too, if they're getting their soldiers out of there, a, a bigger aerial bombardment could easily follow. But the point, the, the point is though that they uh, opt, they seem to have opted not to continue to lose men and armor in this in this planned atrocity that they wanted to uh, commit and extend in Al Shifa. It when it turned into a battle, and it turned into that same attritional dynamic that we've seen over and over again in this war. They've uh, withdrawn. So that's it, I think, for today. Uh, I'm not going to do any deep dives. I'm reading uh, Elon Pape's book. I'm going to write something on nonviolence. I've got a plan for my Substack and to write something on a couple of some research I've been doing on nonviolence, you know, the culmination of which in 2018 in Gaza was the Great March of Return in which the Israelis just massacred uh, Palestinians at the at the border with Gaza with absolute impunity and nobody in the it made absolutely no difference. So all the nonviolence trainers and proponents, um, well, they got what they were trying to get the Palestinians to do. They got that mass nonviolent campaign and the Israelis happily blasted them to smithereens. So that uh, that story and the decades of, of trying to get Palestinians into nonviolence that, that led up to it are part of what I'm going to tell. But there's also connections. I've been writing and thinking about nonviolence for years now. And I did write one piece a few years ago, just looking at the fact that the U.S. civil rights movement was not a nonviolent movement. And I've done research showing that the Indian independence movement uh, was also not a nonviolent movement. So there's no big historical nonviolent movement ever in history. There's no such thing. So trying to get Palestinians to be nonviolent was always something that was not possible. It's not humanly possible. Humans don't work that way. There's always going to be violent resistance to massive violence of occupation and imperialism. So I will be writing that. I'll get to writing that and, and maybe I'll talk about that here. If not, then you, you guys can check it out on Substack. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, like and subscribe. We'll be back. Um, with the next video, but until then, just hang in there, stay strong, and uh, and we'll um, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, and like and subscribe and stuff like that. Thanks.